We have a father. from the curse of the law. Father, we say, may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, as we hear the word and as the service continues, Father, we pray that you speak to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we will receive a divine touch from you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah! I would like to thank our daddy and mommy Gio for such a wonderful opportunity to bring the word to us. And I also want to thank the directors of the Teens and Children Education. Thank you for your labor of love. Thank you to every teacher, to every coordinator. Thank you for your labor of love over us. I pray in the name of Jesus that your labor will not be in vain. And that we, your children, we will make you proud in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The topic before me today is divine touch. And our Bible text will be taken from Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 29. Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 29. And a certain woman, which had had an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all she had, and was nothing bettered, but grew rather worse. When she heard of Jesus, came to him and pressed behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if, may, if I may touch but his cloth, I will be home. And straight away, the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Praise the Lord. May I decree to someone listening to me right now with a certain illness that has been lingered for so long by the word you will receive tonight you receive your healing in Jesus name The woman with the issue of blood our miracle is a very wonderful miracle and what makes a miracle even special was because she was not the only one that was around Jesus Bible makes us to understand that there were a lot of people pressing around him that she had to squeeze her way through. But what made her touch different from every other person's touch was that she had faith. Tonight, as the word will come unto you, I want you to have faith. Bible says in his word, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he says, and now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, more than we can think, more than we can ask, more than we can think, more than we can ask, according to the power that works in us. Praise the Lord. Meaning that the power of God is not short. The only thing that will devour you, the only thing that will hinder you from receiving tonight is your faith. God is here. God is here. Are you excited? I said God is here. And for as many of us who will receive divine touch in the name of 
Jesus. We must, what is divine touch? Divine touch is simply contact with God. The word touch means an extension of a person's hands to another. And touch could also mean a person's special impute to a particular situation. So divine touch is God being involved in your situation. You coming in contact with God. There are four things that the woman with the issue of blood did. There are four steps she took that got her to a miracle. Number one was that she started after Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood, she started after Jesus. Hmm. You must know that there is nobody, absolutely nobody, who experiences the divine touch remains the same. But you must come. You must come to him. The woman with the issue of blood, she has tried many physicians, but they were not working. Bible says the sorrow of he who looks after many other gods will be plenty. Praise the Lord. Psalm 16 verse 4. Psalm 16 verse 4. The sorrow of those who go after many other gods will be multiplied. This woman has tried and she decided that now I'm going to try Jesus. I'm going to seek him. I hear he's the miracle worker. I hear he's the way maker. I hear he's the one who says it and does it. I hear he's the savior of the world. I hear he's our redeemer. She sorted after God. How many of us today have come to seek God? If you have come to seek God, can you raise your hand above your head and say, God, I am here. <laughs> Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 7, it says, ask and you shall receive. He says, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. He says, seek, and you will find. Today, because you are here to, you are here to seek God, because you are listening to seek God, He will touch you divinely in the name of Jesus. Another thing was that this woman was courageous. Hey, this woman was courageous. She did not look at it that she has this, you know, she has blood all over her body and will be shy and say, ah, no, I don't want people to know that this is my case. I don't want people to know that this is my situation. She was courageous. You need to understand that when there is a will, there is a way. I know how that if we want something really bad, we know how we would go all out to get it. But many times, we become comfortable with our condition. We become comfortable with, with this that is going around us. We see it and we say, eh, hey, eh. Hey. But we are not seeking for the one. The woman with the issue of blood had tried for so long. But what did she do this? And she heard of Jesus and she sorted after him. She took courage. She didn't look at what others would say to her. She took courage and came to him. Oh, are you hearing the word of God today? The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24, it says if you sail onto this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea. You ask, who are you to speak unto a mountain? But who that is, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. The third thing that she did is that she touched Jesus. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. The blood that flows that healed my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And then. Touch the Lord today. How many of us will touch the Lord today? Fire prayer. How many of us will stand on the word of God and say, I will receive my testimony? How many of us will stand on the word today and say, I will receive my divine touch? Can I hear an amen? The fourth thing that she did is that when Jesus came to her and when Jesus said, Who touched me? She came out and proclaimed, I am the one that was healed. When the Lord does the divine in your life, don't give it to yourself. Ensure that you tell others. What is better than receiving a divine touch is that God makes your touch divine. How many of us want our touch to be divine tonight? 
What is better than receiving a divine touch is that God will make your touch divine. That through you, many more people will be brought into the light. Many more people will hear about Jesus. Can I hear God touch me? What can stand in your way of receiving the divine touch? What can stand in your way of receiving the divine touch? I have three points here. Number one, discouragement. Discouragement. You must not be discouraged. Like I said earlier, the woman with the issue of blood, she took courage. It is not easy to declare that, yes, this is actually my issue. Yes, this is actually my problem. The issue we have now in the world is that people like to cover up their problem and everybody has it. And it is a normal thing. It is not a normal thing. It is not a normal thing. And you must stand out and be, you must take away discouragement. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8, this is a word for someone, Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, it says do not be afraid or discouraged. It says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you, and you will neither, you will neither fall nor be abandoned. I say you will neither fall nor be abandoned. Do not be discouraged. Discouragement should have no place in your heart. Tell the person sitting beside you, do not be discouraged. Another thing that can hinder you from receiving the divine touch is lack of faith. Faith is the key to receiving anything and everything from God. Faith is the key to receiving anything and everything from God. When you come to God, you must believe that He is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. You must believe. You must believe. You must believe. Praise the Lord. Bible says in Mark 11 verse 24. I love that verse so much. It says if you ask anything in prayer. It says believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Hold on to the word of God. Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Your father is the king of kings. Your father is the lord of lords. Your father is the owner of all things in heaven and on earth. If he said it, if you ask anything in his name, he will do it. Hmm. So you must ask. And you must stand in faith. You must come with an expectation. As you are here tonight, don't just be here. As you listen to me, don't just listen, but come with an expectation. I have my expectations and I write them down. And I know that the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. Will you hold on to your expectations tonight? If you've not received that what you want God to do for you, if you've not set it in your heart, can you do that right now? Because the Lord is about to work signs and wonders. The Lord is about to work miracles. Can you test and see that the Lord is good? Can you try the faith of God? Praise the Lord. And the last thing that will stand in your way of receiving the divine touch is sin. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Ah, it looks like a curse, but it's not a curse. Because when you are in sin, you are God's enemy. When you are in sin, you are God's enemy. So the Bible knows what he was saying when he said, He that covereth his sin will not prosper. But what do you do? You turn from it and seek mercy. As our Father in the Lord will be coming now to make the altar call, even before he makes the altar call, I want you to start to cancel all those things that you've been saying and say, God, I don't want to have them anymore. I don't want to do them anymore. Father, touch me. Let me receive a divine touch that from today, I no longer do the things I used to do. Amen. Now, we must understand, the Bible says, 
In Isaiah 59 verse 1, I love the word of God because it's our sword in the spirit. Isaiah 59 verse 1, it says, listen, the harm of the Lord is not shut that he cannot carry you, nor is he deaf that he cannot hear you, for your sinners divide him from his carry you. Today, I want you to cry out to God. Today, I want you to stop everything that has caught you short for so long. I want you to desist from them. Say no more. Say no longer. Say no longer. Amen. I want you to stand up. I want you to be on your feet. And you are going to pray a prayer. Just one prayer. You are going to imagine Jesus is beside you. And you are going to pray. You are going to decree over your body. You are going to decree over your finances. You are going to decree over that area of your life that you need a divine touch. And you are going to say, Father, ah, are you ready? I said, Father, I need a divine touch. I receive a divine touch. Can you begin to pray? Father, I need a divine touch. If you are deaf, begin to pray and your ear will open. If you are seeking God for the fruit of the womb, pray that, Lord, I need a divine touch over my womb. If you are seeking God for admission, can you pray that, God, I need a divine touch over my admission. If you are seeking a divine touch over your health, can you decree that, God, I need a divine touch. Our God is good. Our God is faithful. He said in his word, in John chapter 14, verse 14, he says, if you ask, anything in my name i will do it ah can you pray can you pray can you pray that i receive a divine touch the power of god i insist i insist i insist on a divine touch the woman of the woman with the issue of blood she passed through so many crowds and said god you must touch me and if you say god if you touch me if i can only touch the hem of your garment i will be healed i will be delivered Touch us by your power, touch us. 
in the name of Jesus. In Jesus.